After a long and arduous process, after delays on one side and then another, the British Parliament has finally voted to give the green light to invoke Article 50 of the Lisbon Treaty. Even if perhaps many of those here today may not join me in celebrating this momentous decision of the British people, I hope that all will recognise the exercise of democracy. There are two ways of doing a divorce. It can either be mutual recognition that paths are leading in different directions, to still be friends, neighbours, and a recognition that both parties can thrive separately, but that that relationship isn't working. Or it can be negative and acrimonious. I certainly prefer the former. Today we're discussing the guidelines for the 2018 EU budget, and the report makes all the usual calls, more resources, more EU action, more taxpayers' money to be spent. And I think there's always been a disconnect between the structures of the European Union and the British people. This report typifies in a lot of ways that disconnect. Strong support for common EU initiatives in defence and defence research, the interrail uh, tickets, the, uh, the fact that the Court of Auditors reports are giving such a high error rate uh, and the adverse opinion on the legality of the payments underlying the accounts. Uh, again, uh, those things uh, put to one side. We see political groups in this Parliament uh, not only exempt from the staff regulation, re reduction targets, but getting 76 more posts offset by the staff reduction target for the general administration. I, I think all of these things go fundamentally against the way that the British people would see, uh, would see these things. But ultimately, the elephant in the room is how we proceed uh, following Brexit. Uh, the UK must make sure that it is protected. And as, as Brexit approaches, the relevance of all of the items of spending to the UK will diminish uh, month on month. But according to the multi-annual financial framework regulation, by the end of this year, the Commission has to put forward a proposal for the next multi-annual financial framework. So in the spirit of this truth, we must tell the Commission, first of all, that it shouldn't include the UK, of course, in its proposal for the next multi-annual financial framework period. And that's a, an important and necessary first step uh, for, accepting for accepting Brexit and moving on. There needs to be a credible... A long term plan from the EU's perspective what happens post Brexit. The amendments that we've tabled will help protect the UK from a never ending EU bill. Calls for cuts in the EU budget, demands further reductions in EU staff and bu bureaucracy, and rejects expansionist EU defence initiatives.